I wish you were here now, Quincy. You were always there for me when I needed you. Even now, it's your friends who've made me strong enough to carry out what I must do. First, it was Father Janos who started me on this agonizing task. Now, with the eight of your old allies, it looks like we'll end this horrible scourge. So much has happened these past few days. Mr. Alexander Morris. Thank you. Alexander. Arthur, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness while I've been in your city. And now for you to sponsor me in London's most prestigious club. Nonsense. Your brother and I were extremely close. Here, let me introduce you to some of the other members of the Hades Club. Devlin. Alexander, I'd like you to meet Devlin Goldacre. Devlin Alexander Morris. I believe I've mentioned his late brother, Quincy. Yes, you have. Mr. Goldacre, this certainly is a pleasure. It will be an honor to be accepted into your club. So, this is the brother of the famous Quincy Morris. <laughs> I suppose even London isn't big enough for more than one Texan at a time. What brings you here? Well, it's an unusual story, really. I received a letter from a Romanian priest telling me I should investigate the circumstances surrounding my brother's stabbing. Ah, your Romanian priest couldn't have directed you to a more peculiar city. And now, with the murders in the newspaper... <laughs> oh, do shut up, Leopold. Never mind our Czechoslovakian drunk and his ramblings. So, how long have you been in our fair city? Well, a number of months, actually. I got a bit sidetracked from my investigation when I met Anisette. Since we became engaged and her father took ill, I really haven't had the time to pursue the matter further. Yes, well, <laughs> I can see how Anisette could have that effect on a man. <laughs> Excuse me, sirs. I have a message from Mr. Morris. For me? Thank you. Good Lord. It's a note from Mr. Bowen's doctor. Mr. Bowen has just suffered a fatal heart attack. I have sedated Miss Bowen and would appreciate your presence tomorrow morning. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, perhaps I should go home. I could do with some rest as well. Pardon me. Death is such a dreadful business. said you must let him go. Andrew is gone. I know, but it's so hard. I miss him so. Let me call the doctor to remove his body. The sooner he's in the ground, the sooner his soul can you rest. You think <laughs> that death can take her from me? Oh, Daddy. Said, no! I'm so glad you're here. Shh, it's all right. Where's the doctor? He's gone. He said it was a heart attack. Put on my shock. Shock? An open window in this weather. I shall have to talk with Miss Culpepper. Oh, Alexander, I'm so tired. Why do things have to go away? Why can't all the things we love stay forever? I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. In Romania. I have dispatched a telegram to Father Janos. It reads, I have arrived in England and am looking into the circumstances of Quincy's death. Strange things are happening here. Please reply soon. Arthur is busy just now. I'm sure he'll be with you in a moment. Yes, he was my carriage driver. Ah. I had sent him to deliver this package and was beginning to wonder about his late return. Well, where was this package bound, sir? To the residence of Mr. Jonathan Harker. Let's 56, Rochester, Marble Arch. <laughs> it was a gift for his son, young Quincy. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, I suppose this belongs to you, then. <laughs> we found it by the body. Decapitation is a most horrible crime. <laughs> Strange. There's no accounting for the blood loss. Those are beautiful flowers, Mrs. Harker. Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Oh, I do love roses. They remind me of someone I once knew. Fragile, beautiful, <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Morris? Well, I'm fine, but 
I'm worried about my fiance, Anisette. Her father, Andrew Bowen, just passed away. Oh, how terrible. I'm sorry to hear it. I knew Mr. Bowen from business affairs. Poor Anisette. Well, I should tell her you send your condolences. But I'm afraid that's not all. The Homewood's carriage man has been, well, murdered. He was on his way to deliver a present to little Quincy. He was found decapitated, his body drained of blood. <sighs> Mina, have you looked in on Quincy? Not for a while, no. Perhaps you should. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, but I have some pressing matters which I must attend to. But I wanted if to talk to you If you wish to talk business, then come to my office. That paper's not for the weak order today of those who lose their heads easily. <laughs> right messy it is. That fella with his head cut off and all, his blood gone. Mm. Oh, I need a drink. It's still a saucy jack when this day's over. A saucy jack? Haven't you heard of it, Gov? The best pub in the Strand. Me mouth is watering already for a mug of Rebecca's ale. <laughs> I found some curious articles in the paper and pasted them below. <laughs> Hello, sir. How's the day treating you? That could be better. Oh, I hate to see one of me customers in the mouse. <laughs> Tell you what, you give me your name and I'll get you a mug of ale on the house. Wow, Alexander Morris at your service. My name's Rebecca Eaton. I'm the owner of this fine establishment. Oh, careful. This one, Becky, is moody. Could be the murderer. <laughs> oh, keep your mouth shut. Don't mind them. They scared. Count of all the people being killed. Real unnatural like too. Heads cut off and the bodies all dry of blood. Hey, I'd lose my head for you, Becky. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> Strange killings, they is. That woman in white been seen all over London. It's like that bloofer lady years ago. Bloofer? What kind of name is that? Never heard the like of four or since. She's a woman what bit young'uns on the neck. Where'd you hear this? I read it in a book. I was delivering a bunch of them to that bookstore in King's Cross. What's it called? Let's see. <laughs> the noggin's gone all rusty. Goldstein and Horn, Goldfield. Gold Acre? Yay, that's it. Gold Acre and Horn. May I help you? Mr. Horner? Alexander Morris. Mr. Holmwood has sponsored me into the Hades Club. I understand your partner's also a member? Oh, yes. Devlin mentioned you. It'll be a pleasure having you in our club. What brings you to my little bookstore? Well, this might sound a little bit strange, but I've been told you have a book about the Bluefer Lady. The Bluefer Lady? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Hmm? She would appear as a beautiful ghost-like woman with a horrible practice. She would summon children only to return them later, some on the verge of death. The children would call her Bluefer instead of beautiful. Yes, there's a striking resemblance to some other cases I know of. <sighs> Um, how much do I owe you? A gift from one Lord of Hell to another. From the library of Dr. John Seward, Perfleet Asylum. Hmm. What do you want? Alexander Morris to see Dr. Seward. The doctor's busy. The loonies is acting up. Now go away! <laughs> Oh, 
Here, take this. You may need it. I'll see if the doctor gets your car. Yeah. Mr. Strancikowski, how are you? So, it is the Texan seeking companionship in this time of loss. No, no, I just... <laughs> I can't... You think you know of loss? I lost my wife. Oh, my poor Ilyana. But she is not dead. Oh, no, she lives. I have seen her walking in the moonlight. Get hold of yourself, oh, man. Ilyana! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Arthur isn't here. He's at a meeting with Mr. Stransikowski, a fellow member of the club. Yes, I've met Mr. Stransikowski. He's a rather odd man. Uh, but it is so sad. He was such a gifted composer before the death of his wife, Ileana. It was a carriage accident in Europe at a place called Borgo Pass. She was buried in London where her family rests. She must have been very beautiful. Oh, yes. Although I never met her. Uh, and the ceremony was a closed casket. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must deliver this present to the Harkers. Well, I'd be glad to do that for you, Mrs. Holmwood. Oh, why, thank you. But call me Regina, please. Regarding our previous agreement... Uh, Mr. Morris, how can I help you? I'm delivering this for the Holmwoods. It was the gift that coachman was taking to Quincy before he... Yes, uh, well, thank you very much. I've come on personal business as well. I feel a bit foolish, really. I, I don't know where to begin. So many strange things that have happened, and, well, I have so many questions concerning... Yes, well, the... I appreciate that you think I can help, Mr. Morris, but this is my business office, and I'm quite busy. I see. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Wait. Mr. Morris, please, I don't wish to appear careless. Here. Take this. A friend of mine gave this to Mina during troubled times. She would like Anna Set to have it to comfort her. Thank you, Mr. Harker. Come lay your weary troubled head upon my loving breast. Tomorrow brings the sun again, but now tis time to rest. Moonlight, hold you safe and warm, your brows the stars caress. Tomorrow brings the sun again, but now it is time to rest. A lovely song. There you are, leaving poor Anna set alone at a time like this, you cad. Come sit by me, Alexander. Juliet just stopped by to try and cheer me up. She's offered to spend the night here. Always a pleasure to see you, Miss Adams. If anyone can make Anna set feel better, it's you. The Harkers have also been generous. Mina wanted you to have this necklace. Jonathan said that it had been given to them during a time of loss as well. You know, it's strange. I hate to say it, but last night I had a dream about your father passing away. I saw him lying there as peaceful as can be. He seemed to look up, and there was a woman standing beside him. She shone like an angel and reached for him. I saw his arms go to her, and all around him was flowing white. And then she turned away, and I woke up. I believe it was an angel come to take him to heaven. I feel her presence all around us. Even this cloth reminds me of my dream. May all of us go as peacefully. Mr. Alexander Morris, the evil awakens. Beware the night. 
Nothing is safe. If you respect your dead brother's memory, send me your findings. Vince's friends can verify my claims. Father Janos Kurtzeni. Soul, governor. That's not a sound you want to be hearing around here. Last time I heard that, it meant death. The Demeter Wolf, they called it. Come off a ghost ship in a storm sent by the devil himself. Only one still aboard was a captain, dead. The beast fled that damn ship, first chance it got, running off to the devil knows where. None of us saw it again till it came after me, made swales. I was watching from the woods too far away to help. I seen it coming after him, snarling as loud as all the demons of hell. My knees gave out as I seen it leap at him. And the merciful Lord blessed me so I wouldn't remember what happened to him, but as I fell, I swear, that wolf reached for swales with two arms as human as yours or mine. Poor old soul. He never found the beast still out there somewhere waiting for its next victim quincy's brother i gladly shake your hand sir your brother was a fine friend and a true gentleman well, thank you sir i was wondering if i might take a i met my wits end for dealing with them i can only think it is caused by the full moon the red moon rising so it's true, then, what they say about the moon and madness. The inmates often succumb to its influence. Farnsworth with his howling, Sherman drooling like a mad dog, and Renfield with his paranoid fits and ridiculous demands. It's almost as bad as the last time that... Yes, you were saying? I'm sorry I bored you like this. I always ramble on about my work when I'm tired. Why don't you come back tomorrow after breakfast? Well, all right, Doctor. Set. News ain't pretty today, Gov. There's been another murder. Mm. When will they catch the fiend? But this one's different. A lady was found. She still has her head, but not a drop of blood. Horrible. I bet the fella that's been doing this didn't have time to finish the job. The art's closing in on him. Just a matter of time now. I purchased a paper and clipped out some rather interesting articles.
Alexander. I'm so happy you're here. Nana said. How are you? I'm fine. But I'm worried about Juliet. She's so pale and has said such strange things lately. She has even taken to sleepwalking. How are you, Juliet? I'm doing well. I had another dream. And now that you're here, I must tell it to you both. I saw Andrew again. Oh? Yes. He told me that he is happy now, that he is finally at peace. His worries and troubles are no more. And then we hugged. And he said that you needn't worry, Anisette, that he is watching over you. I believe he is in heaven now. That's beautiful, Juliet. Yes, but it's so odd. Father never showed affection to me. I know that he loved me, but I can't think of the last time he said so, much less hugged me. But he is free now, Anna said, free from pain. He flies with the angels. He is free to show his love. I'm all right. I think I've overworked myself a bit. I just need some rest. Thank you, Anisette. All this sleepwalking's taking its toll. Let her rest. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Strits. In Romania. In Romania. I send a telegram to Father Janos. It reads, Please send more information. Last message incomplete. What is the evil? What is the significance of the knife? Here is one of the reasons I could not meet with you yesterday. A number of our patients have been keeping me busy, but none more so than he. Good Lord, I believe he has actually gotten worse. Life, life, the blood is the life. My lies, all over lies. But it's here, here. I tried it, but no good. It's come back. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Good God, Doctor. Do you always let animals roam through the patient's rooms? Well, I... How did you get the hound in here? It's here. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Strange, the tracks seem to go from the window to the bed and then back again. Well, I don't see how Renfield could have made them. There's no other mud in the room. Never underestimate the mind of the insane, Alexander. I've known Renfield to be capable of... What? What is it, Doctor? What? Oh, uh, nothing. But it really is time I got back to work. I'm sorry I haven't been much help. You wanted information about your brother, and I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. However, I believe my old mentor may be of some help. Dr. Abraham Van Helsing. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Harker. I'm sorry I disturbed you at your home yesterday. Yes, well, what's done is done. Sir, I was wondering what you know about my brother's stabbing. Really, there's nothing to tell. It was an unfortunate incident, nothing which concerns us now. Well, sir, maybe you never suffered such a loss. But my brother's death will concern me until this matter is settled. Young man, what happened, happened. You should be happy with your memories of him. Memories? For God's sake, man, this is all I have left of him! There has never been a greater tragedy. I didn't want to involve you. Whatever it is, I'm already involved. It's too late to stop what I've begun. Tonight. Come to my house tonight. But leave me now. Ah, Byron. Very good. That will be one pound. Very well. Oh my. What an interesting handkerchief. Oh, it's just a bit of cloth I found. Hmm. Perhaps you can tell me something about it. Afraid I can't help you there, but you might try the university. They have all sorts of scholars who can illuminate it for you. <laughs> Here, let me help. Oh, thank you. It's just a minor cut. 
It's never minor where blood is concerned. I'm sorry, but Jonathan is not here. Oh, well, perhaps later. Well, pardon my curiosity, but are you going somewhere? Well, Quincy is going to visit his grandmother. Oh, well, during the holidays. Oh, it's been so long since she's seen him. And the country is lovely this time of year. Oh, I'm sure she'll be glad to have them. Grandparents thrive on the smiles of their grandchildren. I'd like to thank you for your gift to Anisette. The cross was very nice. Cross? Oh, yes. An old family heirloom. I hope it comforts her. In exchange, may I present you with this? Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Alexander, I'd like to talk to you tomorrow at Mr. Bowen's funeral. Very well. I'm curious. Are you the Gold Acre of the Gold Acre and Horner Bookstore? Yes. Why does that interest you? Been doing some reading in the faint hopes of becoming cultured? Well, recently I've been to your store. That partner of yours is a rather odd fellow. <laughs> yes. Horner serves a purpose. That store is merely a hobby. It means no more to me than this coin. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, sir. I'd like to send an overseas telegram. And what is the destination, sir? Amsterdam, Holland. Amsterdam, Holland. I have sent a telegram to Professor Van Helsing. It reads, I was given your card by Dr. Seward. I have urgent need of your assistance. I am the brother of Quincy Morris. Please reply. I've been given the most curious coin. Well, well let's see. Uh, it's not chocolate. <laughs> Ah, yes, it's uh, from the Transylvanian Principality, yes, it's, it's solid gold, but uh, not especially rare. I would say that your friend has recently holidayed on the continent. Interesting pattern. Ah, uh, yes, those beautiful designs, uh, roses, I believe. Uh, oh, my. Uh, this cloth is over a century old. Where did you get this? I, I found it at my fiancé's house. Well, I simply must study it further. You must let me keep it and telegram you with the results of my research. You simply must. Certainly. Oh, Bill went out into the night and had it over bed. He saw a pretty woman in white dress as the day she wed. She was really quite a fright of Bill began to dread. She gave him such an ugly body, bled and bled and bled and bled and bled. It's a rather tasteless song. Oh, don't be too harsh on them. He's frightened. Professor Van Helsing, this is Alexander Morris, brother of Quincy Morris. How do you do, sir? I am very glad to meet you. If you be Quincy's brother, then your friend I am. Consider it so. Thank you. Let me say likewise, sir. Yeah, good. Uh, Jonathan is telling me you have a certain knife. Uh, may I see it? Yeah. Quincy's knife. Sir, I wish to uncover the truth about Quincy's death. I am telling all to you now, but uh, first, uh, sit, sit. I'm sorry you've waited so long, but the truth is unbelievable. Miss Mina, speak true. What would you say, Mr. Morris, if I'm telling you vampires exist? Well, I'd say you're pulling my leg. <laughs> Spoken like a true Texan, yeah? But I know pull your leg. They are real, and your brother died while killing one. You can't be serious. But he is. Believe me, I know how hard it is to accept such things. Hear me out. It was ten years ago that business is taking Mr. Jonathan Harker to Transylvania and the castle of Count Dracula, the vampire. He who is lord over all the Nosferatu. Unknowingly, Mr. Harker arranged for him to be coming here to London. There he is sucking the blood of the innocent Miss Lucy Vestriner. She who was fiancé to Mr. Arthur Homewood. Well, this can't be true. But it is. I wired Van Helsing, but it was too late. Dracula killed Lucy. But no normal death, for she arise again in unlife. It 
bring us much pain to stop her. But now, she is resting with the angels. Then we hunt Dracula down. We found his caskets, full of the earth he needed to survive, and destroyed them. We had succeeded. But then we discovered what he had done in our absence. He drank Mina's blood. He tried to make her like him, a creature of the night. But it is too late for him, and he must flee back to his castle across the sea. We are giving chase. Miss Mina's very soul is depending upon us. We finally catch him, and there, your brother is plunging this very knife into his breast. Such a victory! But no. Quincy is suffering terrible wounds at the hands of Dracula's gypsy servants. His last words are having no regrets. This is also impossible. This may help you. It's my journal of those trying times. I value it highly. I believe there is vampire walking the streets again. It is responsible for the murders. I know something of this. The blue for lady. Yeah, yeah, there have been many blue for ladies. Lucy become one after she's suffering strange symptoms, sleepwalking and nightmares. But Juliet Adams, Anisette's friend, she has the same symptoms. I must be examining her. Anisette, I'd like you to meet Professor Van Helsing. A very lovely girl. You are having my deepest sympathy on your recent loss. You're very kind, sir. Uh, please, when is the funeral? Ten o'clock in the morning at St. Joseph's Cemetery. I will be there. And this is Dr. John Seward. Pleased to meet you. And uh, who be this? Another young, lovely girl. Might is making an old man's heart feel young again, yeah? Oh, sir. <laughs> Professor Miss Juliet Adams. Oh, a lovely name. You will forgive me, Miss Adams, but as a doctor, I must be speaking bluntly. You do not look well for one so young. May I be examining you as a doctor to a patient? Really, I feel fine. Dr. Van Helsing is the top in his field. You can trust him. All right. I will be leaving some medicines in your room and around the house. Rest you need. Anna said she'll be watching you, yeah? Of course. You will be fine with me, Juliet. I'm not worried. I just wish Devlin would stop by. I've not seen him all day. Miss Anaset, I bid you whatever you do, do not be opening the windows. No matter what. Alexander, would you be a dear and give this to Devlin the next time you see him? I'm not sure I shall be able to. How bad is it, Professor? She is bit by the vampire, but not so bad as to die yet. If she is bit again... I cannot believe it. It is too much like Lucy's ordeal. Yeah, but this time we know what it is. Come, you and I return to the asylum. We let Alexander go rest, yeah. Now, Mr. Morris, the creature has fled. I owe you my life, sir. I wonder, did you happen upon her by accident? Or did she wait for you? <clears throat> Morris, I didn't hear you. You creep in like a cat. I didn't mean to startle you. 
Have you been to Anisette's? Is Juliet there? How is she? She's ill. But she did ask me to give you this. Oh, poor Juliet. Her world revolves around me. Why, I don't know. I love her. I would do anything for her, even die. It's me that's done this. I was in control, but now it's all slipping from my grasp. Kind of European language. What's this? Interesting. Mr. Alexander Morris, the knife was your brother's. Keep it safe. Beware the evil. Beware the vampire. Guard yourself well, Father Janos Corzini. Vampire? Would you like some breakfast? No, thank you. How are you feeling today, Juliet? Tired. So very tired. What have you done with the garlic? Dr. Van Helsing has put it up for Juliet's health. Oh, that's my doing. Juliet could barely breathe for that awful odor. I finally threw them out and opened a window for her. I'm sorry, my dear friend, but I don't think I shall be strong enough to see your father off. I feel as though I've been running. Just like in my dream. I feel so very weak. Oh, you silly goose. I wouldn't let you go to a dreary old funeral in your condition anyway. You stay right here and don't budge a muscle until we get back. I'll have Miss Culpepper stay here to keep you company. Oh, there's no need to do that. I'll stay with you while the others are away. Here. At least you can be with us in spirit. So, you come to read about our local ghouls. Or a bit of games that go. Pardon me? You ain't had. Dug up an entire cemetery they did. Took everything, coffin and all. Between you and me. And friend Max says whoever done it must have sneaked in during the day. He locks that place up tight as a drum at night. After picking up a paper, I pasted articles of interest in my journal.
ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I would like to end this sad event by announcing that there will now be a gathering of the friends of Andrew Bowen at the home of Arthur and Regina Holmwood, Lord and Lady Godalming. Everyone is invited. Alexandra, have you met Reverend Jenkins? No, it's my pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Uh, Mina has told me something of your situation. I believe I may be able to send her something tomorrow morn which could help you. Thank you. Alexander, the Homewoods are about to leave. Oh, Lord and Lady Godalming, I must thank you for your kindness. Think nothing of it, my dear. Do you remember my old patient, Renfield? The bug eater. Yeah, very well. Well, recently... If ever there's began. anything I can do for you, please let me know. You're very kind. I'm glad you could join us, Alexander. Renfield has become even wilder than when you saw him. <laughs> so, the esteemed doctor comes to learn from me. <laughs> You're too late. Too late. Too late. The master has been reborn. Revived. Come, out with it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The master will have his revenge. You're too late. <laughs> and then, then he will make me like him. <laughs> doctor. Too late. Too late! Too late! <laughs> I guess now we're even. A life for a life. It does not matter. Nothing matter now. What then feel say is true. Means we all dead men. I can't thank you and Arthur enough for all you've done. Think nothing of it. So, where is young Quincy? Oh, we've sent him off to be with his grandparents. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, what with the holiday and all, you must be counting the days until his return. Actually, we've found ways to pass the time. I do wish Juliet could be here. I don't believe the two of you have met her. She's been quite ill recently. So, tell us about your wedding plans. Oh, I've already picked out a dress of the purest white. Father would have been so proud. I'm sure he would have, my dear. I'm sure he would have. Mr. Morris, I have examined the cloth you left me. It is close to 125 years old. I believe it is a burial cloth of a royal family. The Middle European weave supports this theory. The blood stain is recent. Randall Briarcliff. Middle European. Mr. Stransikowski, I hope you'll pardon the intrusion, but I understand you hail from Czechoslovakia. Well, you see, I've come across the strangest fabric. I understand it's of Middle European origin. I was wondering if you My might wife! Not... You stole this from my wife. I buried her in this dress. Damn you! You stole this from my wife! You stole this from her! They lied. I knew she still lived. They lied. I'm coming, Ileana! Excuse me. Do you have any books on vampires? What? What did you say your name was? Alexander Morris, sir. Well, Mr. Morris, I would advise you to leave such things which do not concern you well enough alone. Those who unearth such things often end up in the earth. I didn't think to find you here. Oh, Mr. Morris, please sit. Let me tell you, when lunatic is trying to kill you, you drink too, yeah? Thank God Renfield did not succeed. Yeah, thanks be to God. And to you, Mr. Morris. But if what he is saying be true, then perhaps I wish otherwise. Tell me what's happening, Professor. For Quincy's sake, if not for mine. Ah, if Quincy were here, then I would have strength enough. I'll not hear this, sir. You were the strongest among us. If you falter in these times of trouble, what hope is there for the rest of us? You are right. I must not give in. 
I tell you what is disturbing me so. In all my thoughts, my nightmares, never did I conceive of this. He has risen, Mr. Morris. Dracula. How can this be? As yet, I do not know. We meet at Jonathan Harker's house tonight. We must be putting this fiend back into his grave forever. Wait a moment, Professor. I found this at a local bookstore. Oh, oh. oh. Romanian. Yeah, here's the word for amulet. And here death, and here life. Clue, this might be. I have a friend at university, Randall Briarcliff. Perhaps he is saying more. Come to Harkos tonight. Bring this with you. Thank you, Professor. I shall meet you tonight. The stairs are down the hall. Go straight and you can't miss them. I'm sorry. I'm not looking for the way out. I'd hoped you could help me with this Romanian manuscript I found. What? Why didn't you say so? Here, have a seat. <coughs> Authentic? Huh? I do believe it is, yes. Yes. It appears to be a medieval book of magic. <laughs> See, it's just filled with, with so-called spells. <laughs> Here's one that's tied to an amulet of power. It also speaks about bringing the dead back to life. <laughs> Oh, my, uh, yeah. Let me just jot down a few notes, and I promise I will tell you more tomorrow. Oh. You are all wondering why I am calling this meeting, yeah? Well, you all come here for the same reason ten years ago. Count Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. Once again, he has risen from beyond the grave. Impossible. It can't be. Oh. Brandy, quickly. Yeah, I am feeling like Mina when I am discovering the truth. Now, I am ready for what we must do. But you helped us kill him. You assured us we had nothing to fear. Once we had no fear, now... I am telling you what I find. Miss Juliet Adams has the Nosferatu bite on her young neck. That doesn't mean it's Dracula. You yourself said he isn't the only vampire. There be more, my impetuous friend. I am seeing our old nemesis Renfield. I know he has once again fallen under Dracula's power. I believe it as strongly as in anything I ever believe. But how could he come back? What could he possibly want with Juliet? That I am afraid I do not know. Actually, I believe I may have come across something. At the Gold Acre and Warner Bookstore, I chanced upon an odd Romanian manuscript. Dr. Briarcliff at the university said it uh, mentioned a spell to bring back the dead and an amulet of power. It could well be that this is somehow tied to Dracula. After all, Juliet is Devlin Gold Acre's fiance. Yeah, all these things, they may well be connected. I must be thinking on this. To work we get. Jonathan, from your office we work. Mina, we spare you the invasion of your home. Alexander, you see to Miss Anison. Help her to be watching Juliet. Let me know when our Dr. Briarcliff is telling you more. I'll check with some other solicitors and see if we can pinpoint the demon's havens. I'm going to check on Regina. I'll not lose another to that fiend. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, my friend. Well, gentlemen, we meet again on the morrow. Yes, that will be fine. Doctor, just how powerful is this count? Oh, he can do many things. The powers of storm and beast are just a few. How did you stop that wolf? Wolfsbane! Why would a wolf run from this? I'm afraid that was no mere wolf. We must be checking on the others. Make sure they're all right. What are you waiting for? Both Anisette and Juliet have gone to sleep, blissfully unaware of the threat hovering over us. So that they may rest, I shall watch over them this night. What are you doing here? 
Don't be frightened, Alexander. After all, Alexander, it's only a game. <laughs> what you do in the street? We are the ladies. Oh, dear Lord, quick, we have no time to lose. You are too late for Miss Adams. But we may yet save Anaset. Anaset? I mean, what happened? How did he get in? You, you leave now. You no good to us like this. Harker's office tomorrow morning. We give her fresh blood. But you, you leave. Sir, it's my bag in the front hall. Mina? Over here, Alexander. He sent it. Reverend Jenkins. He sent it. Morning, Gov. Looking forward to celebrating the new year? Out with the old, in with the new? I certainly hope to be celebrating. Why, Gov, there's plenty to be happy for. If nothing else, the coppers has almost solved the slasher case. So me, I'm looking forward to bringing in the new year right. After all, by this time next century, we'll have world peace, cured all diseases, and in famine, be riding around in the moon. I kept a number of curious articles that I read in the paper. Good morning, Alexander. Where's Arthur? I would have expected him here leading the charge. He sent a message saying he had to attend his coachman's funeral this morning, but hoped to meet us after Juliet's funeral at noon. When I checked on them after our scare last night, Regina said they hadn't seen anything, much less a wolf. I think we're all right for now. Excuse me, message for Dr. Seward? For me? Good Lord! There's been a fire at the asylum. At least one person is dead, and several more are trapped. I must be off at once. Yeah, we all need to be about our duties. We meet at Anaset after Juliet's funeral. No, oh, Alexander, wait, wait, I almost forget. I need a steak so big and pointy. Oh, and a mallet, too. Good boy. Yeah. in your manuscript and found it absolutely fascinating. The most fantastic part refers to this ancient amulet of power. Not only would it be part of a ceremony to raise the dead, but it would allegedly allow its wearer to appear as anything or anyone he desired. This amulet would not operate on its own, however, requiring a user already powerful with magic. I have reason to believe the trinket this legend is based on may really have existed. Please see me at your earliest convenience. Respectfully, Dr. Randall Briarcliff. Dear Alexander, this is a dictaphone recording of my last conversation with Renfield, made the night before he died. It did not strike me as surprising then, but now... Please listen to it. I need someone to confirm my suspicions. Dr. John Seward. Dr. Breyer.
God, what a mess. If you're waiting for Dr. Seward, it'll be a while. He's gonna be busy for some time. to ashes and dust to dust. Love them to come see her off. I pity about that fella earlier. I guess no one wanted to see a headless corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I says you gotta make what friends you can while you're still alive. That way it ain't so lonely when you're gone. <laughs> I got a message for you, Ducky. It's from a Mr. Olmwood. Alexander, I've discovered something of urgent interest to the both of us. Please meet me at my house at 9 p.m. tonight. Of course I recognized you, sir. Mr. Harker left specific instructions to help you or his other friends in any way I can. The dictaphone is on his desk. Is there any other way I can help? No, you've been most kind. Very well. Call me if you need anything. Whatever possessed you to attack Van Helsing? Do you not value your own safety? Your own life? Life? <laughs> what, what do you know about life? You see, nothing knows nothing about life. There is life after life. 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 Oh, my poor Juliet. But she's still alive, Horner. She's still alive. He doesn't care about that, Devlin. He doesn't care about anything but himself and his own bloody desires. He has his own plans. We should never have freed him. Now we're trapped. Trapped by our own hands. Trapped? We're trapped? No, we're not trapped. <laughs> Rebecca, I just found the most curious drawings. Oh, well, that is odd. Oh, that must have been left by your friend, Mr. Goldacre. Oh, that's a peculiar bloke, that one. He was standing right where he is now, muttering away. That's disgusting. We must be doing it and doing it tonight. If we do not drive a stake into Juliet Adams immediately, heaven help those who be her next victim. Well, I've had no luck tracking the demon down. I've checked with every shipping clerk I know. I suppose Dracula doesn't make the same mistake twice. Our only option now seems to be stopping Juliet. All the death we have already seen. Even Renfield is dead, having been consumed in the fire at my asylum. I don't know if I'm capable of joining you tonight. Today's events have left me rather weak. I'll stay here with Seward. After all, Anisette's already been attacked once. This way I can stay close to Regina. That sounds like a good idea, my friend. The rest of us is meeting at the cemetery before dark. Are you all right, Mrs. Harker? <laughs> Call me Mina, please. I'm fine, really. Well, you seem worried about something, Miss Mina. <laughs> Miss Mina is what Quincy used to call me. Can I confide in you, Mr. Morris? Certainly. I am very disturbed. I see glimpses of the Count in my mind. How? How is this possible? I carry a bond with him from years ago. At times I see him as though through a fog. What do you see now? It may help us find him. He appears different than before, but familiar. He seems close to us. Very close. <laughs> Before the dark becomes the day, night.
The monster will come. Stay back, get warm. But how did Dracula get in here? Well, if none of you is protecting Anna said, then it falls to me. Also, I must hypnotize her as I want to mean. Oh, I pray we find out what the demon be up to. He said wise, won't they tip Dracula off to our plan? Then? What plan? We have no plan. But Doctor, what can I do? Anything? Anything at all? Do I look like an old man? Out, out, all of you! You're no good to me here! Stop! Stop? <laughs> you think you could stop me? I will come back from the grave again and again. I will kill you and all your friends and feast upon your blood. <laughs> Doctor, quickly, we must get him to my house. We can have Mina stay with Anaset. You, you, uh, debt paid again. <sighs> I agree with your self-diagnosis, Doctor. You appear to have suffered a stoppage of the heart. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Mina, what are you Anna doing Anna said, here? where is Anna set? Mr. Goldacre told me Van Helsing wanted to talk with me right away. He said he would watch Anna set. Van Helsing is sent for no one. <coughs> Rest, Doctor. Don't try and talk. Holmwood! Holmwood is... off. Jonathan, what's wrong? Anna set! Anna set! Regina, where's Arthur? Regina! Regina? My Juliet. The Vanilla Mad! Mad? No. Brilliant. You see, he will come. I've baited the trap. And now he will find out who the true master is. Oh, Anderson, I'm so sorry I put you through this. Oh, my dear 
dear friends, we're together again. Oh, Arthur, thank heaven you're here. He's not Arthur. No. I slew him and his wench months ago. Now no one can hear your screams, Alexander, as I flay the very flesh from your body. And you, my dear Alexander, with you by my side, I will be ready to reign again, ruling the night for all eternity. Stop, David! Go no further! <laughs> you fool. I am lord of the Nosferatu. I have ruled the dark for centuries untold. You really believe this mere trinket can stand between me and my bride? Dracula gave them no warning he had returned. Thank heaven it's over. Yeah, it is over, my friends. And we are all alive. Dracula is gone forever.